Number 46. Write a balanced equation for each of the following nuclear reactions. And then we have letter C. So in this case, we have thorium-232 decays and produces an alpha particle and a radium-228 uh, nucleus, which then decays into actinium-228 by beta decay. Okay. So it seems like we have two different reactions here, right? The first part of the question said we have to write a balanced equation for when this thorium decays and produces the alpha particle and the radium. And then the radium is going to decay again into actinium by beta decay. So let's start with the first equation first, yeah? Yeah. So we'll say equation. Oh, I don't like that. Equation number one. All right, so in this equation, we have to take our thorium-232. Now, we're dealing with nuclear reactions, which means that we have to have those three separate boxes, right, for our nuclide notation, which I represented it like this. I love the colors. <laughs> and in this case, we're going to take our thorium so it's good to just have everything written out. So we got thorium-232. It's decaying, right? And then it's going to produce. If you're producing something, that means that you're always going to have those as your products. So it's producing an alpha particle, which is one thing, and a radium-228. So let's do that. So let's see. This is going to break down into... They told us that it's one of them is going to be an alpha particle. So we have that. And then the other one they're saying, so plus, is the radium 228. So radium 228. Okay. So let's fill in the blanks here and see if we have a balanced equation. Now, this is, needs to be a little bit lower. Okay. So thorium-232. Thorium, let's see. If I find it on the periodic table, I got my periodic table out and I'm searching. I see it. Thorium is TH. So capital T, lower case H. And they told us that it's 232. Anytime that they give you a number right at the end of the um, element, that is always the mass number. They have to tell you this information because mass numbers can change uh, from one element to another, right? Or you could have different mass numbers from the same element. This is the number of protons and neutrons. And that can change because you can change your number of neutrons, right? So the mass number is going to go on the top. Mass number always goes on the top. But the question is, what number goes here, right? Well, the bottom number... That's always the atomic number. And the atomic number for a specific element never changes. So I have to go on the periodic table to search what thorium's atomic number is. It's the beautiful whole number, no decimals, because that's the average mass. And I see thorium has a beautiful 90. So 90, uh, 90 protons for every thorium. This one is done. Now let's deal with the alpha particle. Now, the alpha particle is a subatomic particle, or not a subatomic particle, but it's a nuclear particle, right? But it's secretly a helium, maybe I'll put that in lowercase h, e-l-i-u-m, 4. Alpha particles are always helium 4s. So whether you want to put h-e for helium or put the alpha symbol for alpha, that's fine with me. I like to be fancy when I can be fancy if I... There we go. That's that's good for my standards. <laughs> um, but anyway, helium-4 is an alpha particle. The 4 is going to be your mass number. And since it's a helium, what's the atomic number for helium? Yeah, it's always going to be a 2. So an alpha particle is always going to be a 4 on the top, 2 on the bottom, and either an HE or an alpha symbol, whichever one you want. Coming over to the radium, right? Radium is Ra, sometimes I always get radium and radon mixed up, but that's why we got the periodic table. Radium is Ra, radon is Rn. 
And now that makes sense because there is no N in radium. <laughs> but they told me that radium is a 228. So 228 on the top. And now radium, I look on the periodic table to get atomic number for radium, and that's a lovely 88. Now let's see if this is balanced, right? If it's balanced, the top numbers across the yield sign, think of this as an equal sign, will equal. So let's see. 4 plus 228 is 232, and that's exactly what we have. On the bottom, 2 plus 88 is 90, and that's what we have. So we have our first equation. Now, let's deal with equation number 2. Because we are not done yet. So equation number 2 said that the radium-228 is going to decay into actinium by beta decay. So... We have the radium-228 again, so let's put that down, radium-228, and it's the same number, so RA-228, and a, and a lovely 88, and it's going to decay into, that means, oop, that means that the actinium is going to be one of your new products now, because that's what the radium is turning into. So I have a new one. And this is actinium. A-C-T-I-N, actinium. And now let's find out what actinium is. Now actinium on the periodic table is, I see it, A-C. AC, not Atlantic City, AC, and they told us that this was actinium-228, so once again, they told us the mass number, right? So 228 up on top, we have to go back to the periodic table to see what is the uh, atomic number for actinium, and that is number 89, now, they said that this decays into actinium by beta decay. If they're saying specifically beta decay, this is the same thing as a beta emission. So beta decay, beta emission, they mean the same exact thing. If you are emitting a beta particle or if you're decaying your substance uh, via beta decay, that means that your beta particle is on the product side. Only when it said beta capture will that beta particle be on the reactant side. So just watch out for the wordings that they use. So since it's beta decay, we know that that beta is going to be on the product side. Beta particle. And just know that a beta particle is the same thing as an electron. So you could put E for electron here, or you could use the beta symbol, which is what I like to use. If once again, I like one to my standards, that will do. <laughs> and just know the numbers for a beta particle and an electron, right? It has nothing to do with the atomic mass because they're not located in the nucleus. So a big fat zero for the top. But the charge of a electron is a minus 1. And now, just see if your numbers make sense. 228 equals 228 plus 0. So the masses make sense. And then 88 equals 89 plus a negative 1, which is the same thing as 89 minus 1, which is 88. So we're all good here. And we are done with this question. There's your two equations. I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We also opened up memberships for you guys if you want to become a member to the channel uh, and help us out a little bit more, which you obviously can. Not necessary though, not mandatory, but you know, for anyone who wants to help out a little bit more of a helping hand, thank you so much for considering. And I hope you guys are doing great out there. Keep studying hard, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.